everybody and welcome to this video. This video is going to explain how shortwave litter can start to receive whisper transmissions. This is from cover of RADCOM and it's dated June 2017 and in here there's a very interesting article that I read about whisper light and solar beams and this was the first time that I'd actually heard about whisper transmissions I'd been off air for quite a long time, um, about 20 years. So my knowledge of some of the new data modes was really, really way in the past. Although I've been a, a keen shortwave listener and I've been since I've been off air, uh, I had no sort of shortwave receiving equipment at all. And about three years ago, I got set back up as a shortwave listener. And about two or three weeks ago, some unknown reason whisper came into my head and I just thought let's get set up and see if I can receive the transmission that's what this video is about it's aimed entirely at the short wave listener and it's going to show you very simply how to get set, set up to receive some of the data modes that are now available on HF and also whisper transmissions first thing I need to stress before we start going on with this video is I am a complete novice so some of the things I'm going to explain might be right, might be wrong, but they work for me. So if I've got some things wrong, perhaps you can let me know in the comments. So what are you going to need? And I'm going to explain my setup here. Yours will be different probably, but perhaps not that much different. So I'll be using an RSP2 SDR receiver. Bought this a few years ago and it does exactly what it says on the tin. It works extremely well, but I just wondered how well it works on very, very weak signals, especially um, you receive on Whisper. So attached to that is a long wire, and I've got a long wire which covers 80 down to 10 metres, and it's terminated in a 9 to 1 on, on a ballon. And it seems to work very well. The highest point's about 35 feet in the tree, and the end of that then drops down to the ground, and the other end is about 25 feet and they've got a collapse then coming into the receiver so it's almost like it's a little bit like an inverted l really you're going to need some software you can use your favorite yeah software you don't have to use an sdr receiver you can use a normal receiver when doing this something like one of the new malachites or something like that um everything for me is virtual so everything is run on the computer and i will be using sdr play so what else do you need? You will need virtual cable. Virtual cable is free. In fact, everything uh, I want to show you is free. Virtual cable is free. You don't have to do any setup at all with virtual cable. You just need to run it and install the driver and then reboot the computer. Because the free version, there's very little you can actually do with it. But there's enough in the free version to do what we need to do with it. And you're going to need some decoding software. And the decoding software we're going to be looking at, we're going to look at two packages. We're going to look at the um, WSJT-X software, and we'll also be looking at um, the JTDX software as well. These are very similar. In fact, I'm pretty sure they run on the same engine. It's just the front end interfaces that look different. And believe me, these do the job, and they do them very, very well. If you're going to be receiving whisper transmissions, then I highly recommend that you get yourself an account with uh, WhisperNet because what this will enable you to do is to log all your whisper reception. All the stations you receive on whisper will be automatically logged onto a map so you can go online and see what you've actually received. So that's it really. Let's go along and look at the software and see what you need to install. Okay, so I'm back again, and I've now got the SDR, SDR Uno software running in the background, and I've just muted that for the time being. Okay, these are the three packages that you're going to need to install. You don't have to install both receiving packages. One will do, but I just thought I'd show you both of them. First thing you're going to need to do is download and install virtual cable. This downloads as a zip file, and all you need to do is right-click and click extract all that will extract it into a folder 
and it will open it up you then just need to run the setup and just follow the prompts on the screen very easy to install and it will ask you it will prompt you to reboot the computer after you've installed it to make sure the driver is running nothing else to set up on virtual cable at all not a thing here's virtual cables control panel that's the control panel and there's nothing on it to set up it just it just works and because this is the free version we can't route to other places we can only route to one place and i'll show you how to do that later on in this video so once you've done that it's installed and set up okay if we go back then we've got the other two packages and you just double click them and then click next click i agree and what i would actually do is take this one which adds jd x to all the to the system path for all users so all users get access to this on the computer and then just create a desktop icon and then you click next and it will ask you where you want to install it and this is just install the folder on my c drive that's that one done bit out of that and this is the next one and the installer on this one is very similar you click next click i agree and it's just exactly the same after all users create a desktop i a desktop icon click next and select a folder where you want to install it to and that's installed that's finished that's the setup there so that's your software installed okay i'm back now on sdr uno and this is now set up uh, this is uh, i think sunday morning now and this small cw contest going on on the hf and i'm actually now sitting on 14 megs let's show you the software first let's show you some of the things so if i run up the first package this is what it looks like okay very very few things you need you need to do to get this set up if you go to file go to settings then all you need to do is put your call sign in and your grid first four letters of your grid that's it for that you can then if you want to go and set the decode font size up because it can look quite small on the screen and i just set mine up to 12. that's all i've done you don't need to do anything on the radio because that's all to do with transmitting but you do need to go into the audio tab now you click onto the audio tab this is where you now need to set the input to virtual cable so by now if i now drop this down i've got the options of selecting any of the these inputs obviously if you're using an external receiver will probably that cable from that external receiver will be plugged into your microphone input on the computer so you probably select the microphone but for us we're going to select virtual cable there it is at the bottom cable output vb audio virtual cable that's that done that's that set up nothing else to do with that now we'll click ok so that's done what i would recommend you do first to test this is test it on ft8 ft8 is busy all the time and you'll it's very quick you're not waiting around an ft8 you'll get you get signals very very quickly unlike whisper where you have to wait something like um any seconds before anything happens then maybe even longer after that i'm just going to close this software down now and i'm going to open up the other one and show you how similar the packages are okay this has got a completely different front end but you'll notice that if i go into settings it's exactly the same put the call sign in put the locator in and we'll go to audio and see that the input is set to virtual cable it's exactly the same so what we're going to need to do now is test it and if we go to mode that ft8 what ft8 will do now is will give us the frequency um these are all the frequencies that are listed so it's telling us now if we want to receive ft8 we need to tune our receiver to 14074 and already it's listed you will notice that on this side of the screen here this is the receive input this is the audio level input and at the moment no audio level at all 
nothing there you need to make a quick setting on our SDR software so let me bring up our software okay I have to tell you now that for some reason when I run this software it completely screws up my layout SDR you know it just it just doesn't work anymore for some reason but doesn't matter this is the control panel the only one we're going to need at the moment i'm on mute um let me just go and bring up one as well okay we're back now as you can see there's a contest going on if i unmute this now i know this messes up my audio a little bit but you'll hear that we're now receiving cw i'm just going to mute that for a second I'm just going to bring up the software and it's saying on the software and I need I now need to tune to 14074. Oh, let's go back. 14074. Okay, so that's the FT8 frequency on um on 20. And let me show you what I now need to do. If I unmute this, I can now hear the signals. Okay, I'm just going to mute that again because I think it messes my audio up a little bit. Now I need to go on settings. We now need to choose our output. This is where the SDR receiver is sending its output. At the moment, it's sending it to speakers. What we need to do, send it to virtual cable. So I now send it to the virtual table and I now X that out and unmute. Notice we're not receiving any audio now at all because the audio has now been diverted from the speakers. And as you can see, now we've got receive level up to 70. And we're now just waiting to see if any FTA comes through. It's now on its first pass and there we go. Straight away, we've now got signals coming through. And what I like about this software is it actually tells you the countries where the signal's originating from. So, as you can see, this is now working. And you, the more we sit here, the more stations we're going to receive because FT8 is a really well used mode. So, we know that that is working now. And that is working really well. Wait for another pass to come through. And there you go. Got so much stuff coming through an FTA, so much on there. Uh, and, and I have to say, what I've, I found interesting about FTA, how much DX is on there as well. Um, what I've been doing since getting back into shortwave listing is I've been just listening to the DX clusters. I was pretty much into CW when I was operating as a ham, and I've gone back to listening to CW. So I've been sitting on the clusters and I've just been picking out the DX and seeing how I can receive it. And what I noticed on FT8 was the amount of DX that was on there. And I monitored this one afternoon and I couldn't believe how much DX was coming through FT8. It was absolutely incredible. So there we go. We know that's working now. And um, nothing more for this setup. We can now just switch across uh, to Whisper if we want to. And uh, I'll show you how Whisper works. I'm going to come out of this package. I'm going to quit out of that. And I'm going to run the other one. Right, so. We're now going to, well, I think we're on FT8. We're going to switch mode and I'm going to go to Whisper. And it's now saying that down at the bottom here, we now need to retune to 14095.6. So let me bring up control panel. This is what I mean about it messing up the, uh, what it looks like. I need to go to 14095.6. Forty zero ninety five six. Okay, and I can now go back. One thing that you really want to do is you want to tick the box upload spots because in a minute I want to go onto the Whisper website. First thing you've got to realise about Whisper is that nothing happens quickly. You may wait here for a very, a very long time for anything to happen. In fact, I want to switch bands in a minute because by far, um, the issues bands to receive whisper on for me out here in Europe, out here in the UK, 10 megs. So 
Let me go on to 10 megs. And it says I now need to retune to 10, 138.7. This Oh, the other thing I need to make sure of that I need, I'm going to switch mode. I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to switch mode. And I'm now listening on 1800. Whisper transmission is about 200 hertz wide. But I found that I, I've listened to USB and the filter of about 1.8 seems to work okay. So let me go back to the receive software and let's see if anything pops up. Okay, so there's the first few coming through. I'm actually now going to dip across to the Whisper website. And I'm going to leave this monitoring for a second for the next uh, couple of minutes. And I'm going to go across to the Whisper website to show you how these are put onto the map back in a second. Okay, here I am on WhisperNet. Um, so it's whispernet.org. Very easy to use. It's very easy to get signed in. Just create a new account. Put your details in. I think they verify it. I'm not quite sure now. It's very easy to set an account up. What we want to do, we want to click on map. If I can click on map now, straight away you'll see, go through this with you, you'll see that I can now select the bands that I've been to monitor. So I'm now on 30 meters. If I wanted to, I can select all bands, but I want to leave it on 30. I put a call sign in. And I can put a period in, that's received, so I'll put 24 hours. And then I just click update. And you'll see this is what I've been receiving in the last 24 hours. And this is what is so great about this system. That straight away, not only does it update um, the map, see all the countries that you've been receiving from. And it is absolutely fascinating because I know that some of these stations from here have been transmitting down to below uh, 100 milliwatts. And to think that I've got an SDR receiver and a very simple long wire aerial and it's all capable of receiving signal that weak and signals that are clearly in the noise is quite amazing. And it's also a testament to those stations transmitting these for the efficiency of their transmitting antenna. So absolutely fascinating that's what this is all about so that's it that's about it nothing more to say on this one um as i explained right at the beginning i am a novice <laughs> no i don't know that much about this but it only took me something like 45 minutes from thinking about it getting set up and receiving but all the articles i found we were all based around getting your transmitter, getting your Yesu or your Kenwood or your Vicom or whatever you've got on air with this software. Very, very little available just for the shortwave listener. That's why I decided to uh, to make this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been informative. Uh, if I've got anything wrong, which I probably have, let me know in the comments. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.